Hey everybody, welcome back to Living Traditions Homestead. My name is Kevin. Well, not this past summer, but the summer before, we grew birdhouse gourds in our garden, and they did amazing. Uh, we ended up with over a hundred birdhouse gourds. We've had them in our barn, in the rafters of our barn, drying because they take anywhere from six months to a year to completely dry before you can turn them into birdhouses. So I've just recently started taking them down and turning them into birdhouses just like this. And today I'm gonna to teach you how to turn one into one of these birdhouses. It's actually a really simple process. You can definitely get more fancy than this, but you know, around here, we don't like things that are fancy. We just like to keep it simple, and this is gonna be perfect. Uh, this size hole is actually perfect for a bluebird, which just happens to be the state bird of Missouri. So that's what we're gonna be making today. Uh, let's go to the barn, and I'll show you where we've had them drying. All right, so this is what we did. We actually connected some welded wire to the rafters of the barn, and we've just had these up here drying ever since we harvested them uh, two summers ago. So I'm just gonna take, let's take three of them down for today. And then we'll take these in the house. And I'll show you how we turn these into birdhouses. All right, so I brought these three in the house. Uh, we're gonna make one of them uh, today and we're actually going to make this for bluebirds. Now I did find online a great uh, list uh, that tells the size holes that you want for different kinds of birds. And, and I'll post that in the description of the video so you guys can have that as well. Uh, it's actually really helpful. Different birds need different size holes for their, for their home. So bluebirds are an inch and a half hole, which is what we're going to make today. The other one that I'm going to make uh, either yet tonight or tomorrow is for purple martins, which is another uh, bird that we have a lot of around here, and uh, they require a two or two and a quarter inch hole, so we'll make those uh, as well. But I think I'm going to do this one today. This is uh, this looks like a good gourd. Um, now what we're going to do is we need to get all of this flaky um, old skin off. You can see that there's a lot of mold and they, they don't look very attractive at this point, but this is exactly what you want. All of that mold that grows on the outside of them is what gives them their character uh, once you wash them up. That's what gives them a nice pattern on their flesh and just really kind of makes each one unique. So uh, the best way to get all of this old skin and mold and everything else off is to actually use one of these copper scrubbers that you can buy for uh, doing dishes. Um, these are pretty sturdy. You really don't want to use steel wool uh, because steel wool will come apart in little pieces, uh, but these actually work really, really well. So we'll take these over to the sink and we'll first we'll just run some warm water over these uh, just to loosen this skin up a little bit and then we'll just scrub it as good as we can uh, with the scrubber and we'll get all of this old skin off um, and even though you're putting some more water back on these, they'll dry out super fast when we're done. And then we'll be able to move on to actually making this into a birdhouse. So I'm going to take this over to the sink and get this washed up. And then we'll uh, be back in just a minute to show you how it looks. Alright, so I've got this gourd completely uh, washed up. I've gotten all of the skin off. It was actually really easy. Uh, it took me about five minutes of scrubbing to get all of that uh, old nasty skin off of the outside, all of the mold, everything else. And uh, you can see quite a difference between uh, one that uh, uh, I washed and one that still is brand, you know, that is the way that we let it dry. Uh, it looks a lot nicer already uh, with that uh, skin off. Now, uh, on the inside is gonna be all of the seeds uh, from the gourd. Um, when you first uh, have them, there's not, you're not going to really hear much inside. Uh, what I suggest is that you uh, take the gourd and really shake it until you hear all of the seeds rattling around on the inside. And do that uh, before you do anything else. So that way when we drill a hole for the birdhouse, uh, those seeds will come out real easy. So what I like to do is just kind of set the gourd down, uh, take a look at it, figure out where I think the best spot to put the uh, hole will be. And once I have that figured out, 
uh, then we'll just go ahead and drill the hole. Now what I'm using today is just a, a regular uh, hole saw like you would use for wood. Um, and again, because I'm making this one for bluebirds, it's going to be an inch and a half hole. Now, uh, depending on the size of your gourd will depend how much room you have as to where you put it. Uh, but I'm going to leave probably an inch or inch and a half off the bottom on this one uh, where I drill the hole. And then we'll uh, be able to uh, get all of the seeds out from the inside. Okay, so I've looked this gourd over and uh, there's kind of a flat spot here. Uh, so I'm going to use that area to drill the hole. It just kind of looks like a natural spot for the hole to be. So all I'm going to do, again, I'm going to leave probably... You know, I'm going to go about halfway up on this gourd, but you got to kind of judge looking at the gourd. There's no real, um, you know, no real cut and dry spot that you want to do it. So I'm going to go right about here, and we're just going to drill a hole straight through. Now, again, this is an inch and a half hole. Perfect. So we've got our hole, now we're just going to dump all of our seeds and other things that are inside out into this bowl. Now to give some perspective, I think we planted six or eight plants the year that we grew these and ended up with a hundred gourds. And you can see <laughs> the number of seeds coming out of the inside of just this one gourd. I mean, there are, there's probably two or three hundred seeds inside of one gourd. I actually told Sarah, I think what we're going to do, or what I'm going to try to do, just as an experiment more than anything this year, is just take a lot of these seeds back into the woods and just kind of sprinkle them around and see if they'll just come up and then just let them grow wild back in the woods. Uh, because if that would work, that would be pretty awesome just to be able to go back into the woods in the fall and collect, you know, birdhouse gourds or whatever kind of gourds we have at the time um, and, you know, not really have to take up garden space for them. So I'm pretty excited about trying that and see if it will work. So we'll keep you guys posted on, on whether or not that works. But there's, yeah, there's... A ton of seeds right here just from this one gourd I need to go through some of that yet but yeah there's a lot of seeds there and again we have a hundred gourds so that will be a lot of seed all right so I'm gonna set these aside now on the inside of the gourd is still a lot of this kind of papery stuff um, but everything that I've read has said to actually just leave that when you're making birdhouses because the birds will actually use a lot of that to help them uh, make their nests. So I'm not going to worry about trying to get much of that out of there. Uh, just around the hole just to make it look nicer. So, so basically at this point all we have left to do is to uh, finish it. Um, you can leave it just the way that it is right here. Um, and it will last several years. Uh, the gourd itself will be fairly weather resistant. Um, but I'm actually going to use uh, some Minwax a stain on it. Uh, that will actually help bring out some of this, uh, you know, some of the color on it. Just make it look a little bit uh, shinier. Um, and then I may end up actually using a polyurethane spray once the weather gets a little warmer. I can't really do that right now in the cold weather. Um, but that will prolong the life of it even more. So um, the next thing that we're going to do is drill a hole to be able to hang it. And then we're actually going to drill a hole in the bottom just in case there would get any moisture on the inside. Uh, there's a way for it to drain out from the bottom. All right, so first we'll drill the hole for the uh, string. And now we'll drill a hole in the bottom for a drain. And more seeds are coming out. <laughs> 
All right. So now what I'm going to do is just take a, a little bit of sandpaper and just sand around the hole here and around these holes just to make them a little bit smoother. The birds probably don't care, but it's more, more for us than the birds. All right, now the next thing uh, is going to be to apply our stain. Uh, what I like to do with this kind of stain on things like this, small projects like this, is I'll put on some gloves and I'll just use some paper towels to uh, put the stain on. It puts it on nice and even. Now, I purposely bought stain that was really light in color. I don't really want to change the color of this much. I just want to bring out the natural, you know, changes in color that are there. I don't want to make it a whole new color. You can paint these with acrylic paint or latex paint. You can, you know, I mean, there's all kinds of things. You could wood burn on them, all kinds of things. I just want to leave it as natural as possible, uh, but I do want to use the stain to bring up the differences in the color. So I'm going to get some gloves on and then we'll start putting the stain on. Okay, now I've already mixed this stain. Um, if you're using a brand new can, make sure that you shake it or mix it real good so that the color is evenly dispersed in the can. Uh, but we're just going to, uh, again, use a paper towel and just start spreading this on to the gourd. And you can see it isn't changing the color of the gourd much, but it is bringing out the differences, the natural differences in color, which is really nice. Now the seeds that we bought for these gourds were from our favorite seed company, Baker Creek Seed Company. Uh, Baker Creek Heirloom Seed Company. So these are an heirloom. We'll be able to reuse these seeds and uh, we're excited about that. So now I've got a real good coat of stain on here. I'm just going to let that sit for a while and then I'll wipe off the excess in about five minutes after I let this soak in. But you can see already just how pretty that is and you know god makes beautiful things so this is better than anything i could design by myself so we're just going to let that sit there and we'll let it uh, just kind of soak in for a few minutes and then we'll wipe off the excess so it's been about five minutes or maybe a little more uh, we're just going to wipe off all of the excess uh, stain on these most of it has soaked in at this point uh, but you can see just how beautiful that has made that gourd uh, we started with something that looked like this and now we've got something gorgeous like this. So the last thing that we need to do is to add our string to be able to hang it with. We'll just tie a knot up here at the top. And there we go. Perfect all set to uh, hang out in a tree. Uh, let this out, uh, you know, rest so that all of the stain has time to dry and everything like that. And like I said, when I get a warm day, I will be uh, probably putting some type of either lacquer or spray lacquer or something on these to protect them even a little bit more. Um, but that's really an optional step. So there we go. Uh, you guys, we went from an ugly gourd that's been drying out in the barn for the last year to... Uh, something usable around the homestead. We're actually going to put a bunch of these uh, around our garden this year, uh, especially for the uh, Martins because they'll eat a lot of bugs and so attracting them near your garden is actually a really good thing. Hey, I hope you enjoyed this. I hope you uh, remembered us at growing the gourds last year and now enjoyed seeing these uh, finally turn into something usable. If you're not a subscriber of our channel yet, I hope you'll hit that subscribe button before you leave. Uh, if you are a subscriber, I hope that you'll share our channel with uh, all of your friends and family. Uh, don't forget to check us out on Instagram as well. And until next time, you guys, thanks for stopping by the homestead. Take care and God bless.